G'day everyone, welcome to another CMI podcast. This one is about dinosaur soft tissue and I'm Dr. Jonathan Safdie for Creation Ministries US from Australia originally and with me all the way from Singapore is... Joel. Hey. So this is a surprise for many people, isn't it, Joel? Yes, in fact, this is one of the topics I'm most excited about. Mm. Is dinosaur soft tissue, so... And um, how long has this been known for? Well, before we even talk about how long this has been known for, let's explain to the audience what do we mean by dinosaur soft tissue. You see, mm. sometimes when we open the scientific literature and they talk about soft tissue, they're talking about um, soft body parts in, in animals that have now become fossilized and mineralized. Mm. But that's not what we're talking about here, are we? What, what, I think what? we're talking about things that actually remain after all the minerals have been dissolved. And that's the issue, as well as things like proteins and DNA that certainly shouldn't be lasting millions of years, but they have been found in fossils supposedly millions of years old. So original protein and soft tissue from, yeah. from the creature itself. That's not and even intact fossils. cells. That's how, how fine the detail is, yeah. Like for instance, the most famous one was dissolving a bony material with a collating agent which grabs the calcium and dissolves the minerals away. And so what can't be touched by the collating is the uh, original protein. And they found things like soft and stretchy blood vessels. They're still elastic, and that's been shown on TV. Soft and stretchy blood vessels and mm. blood cells. So this mm -hmm. was by Dr. Schweitzer. So who is she? Who is Dr. Mary Schweitzer? Oh, she's a lady from Montana who uh, studied under Jack Horner, who's a famous dinosaur expert. And she, in fact, was very surprised at finding these. And she told Jack Horner, who was also wondering, well, how could they possibly be around after millions of years? And the creationists are going to love this. Um, <laughs> uh, so Jack Horner basically said, well, go and prove that they're not what you, what you thought, thought they were. And she did the same thing 17 times in one case. And, and she could not disprove that they were blood vessels and blood cells and proteins. So yeah, why, why um, did she have to do it 17 times? Because she's an evolutionist? Very much so. Uh, she, she's definitely, she's, I think, some sort of Christian evolutionist, and she believes in millions of years. So, of course, under her own worldview, she wouldn't expect to find these things, but uh, uh, she's a good enough scientist that she would check and recheck like scientists do, and finding, yeah, they're there. Okay, so what she found was, like, like you say, stretchable soft tissue, blood vessels, and later on she found bone cells and other things. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I hear sometimes on some of these forums out there is that, Mary Schweitzer claims that creationists misrepresent her. Well, I mean, to disagree is not to misrepresent. Like, CMI has always been clear. She is a, an evolutionist. She believes in millions of years, uh, yet she finds these soft tissue, blood vessels, blood cells, proteins, even, uh, even DNA, and she's trying to find ways how they could possibly survive millions of years. Okay, so we're not misrepresenting her. We're not saying that she supports the young earth. But we're saying that she has found DNA, blood cells, blood vessels, proteins. And that is a true statement. Yeah, in fact, I think we actually have a short video clip from um, 60 Minutes mm -hmm. where Mary Spicer was interviewed. So you guys might want to watch this. What happened next happened by mistake. Mary put some fragments of the bone in acid to dissolve away the outermost layer of mineral. But the acid worked too fast and all the mineral dissolved away. Being a fossil, there should have been nothing left, but there was, and it was elastic, like living tissue. This is the piece. <gasps> no. She showed us video she took under the microscope. That's really what happened? Yes. That's the dinosaur yeah. bone? Without mineral now. That's what was left. It looked like the soft tissue she would have expected to find if it had been modern bone. This was impossible. This bone was 68 million years old. So you see this and you think, what? You say, I didn't you want say, to tell anybody. <laughs> that you'd be ridiculed, yes. right? And so I, I said to my technician, okay, do it again. I don't believe it. And yet, in sample after sample, they were there. Things that looked suspiciously like flexible, transparent blood vessels. She finally mustered the courage to tell Jack. She said she dissolved the bone away and there were blood vessels. And, you know, I was like, shocked. I mean, how could that be? How could that be? That's right. The things Mary was finding inside dinosaur bones, look at that, blood vessels, and even what seemed to be intact cells, pose a radical challenge to the existing rules of science. 
that organic material can't possibly survive even a million years, let alone 68 million. And so here we see Mary Schweitzer find this soft tissue. But you see, it's not just Mary Schweitzer because this soft tissue finds has been around for many decades. And many evolutionists are not aware of this. In fact, um, as early as 1954, in the scientific literature, we have actually amino acids from a stegosaur and from fish, so-called ancient fish. Um, 1962, they found collagen. Mm. In, in 1963, they found collagen in fish, again, Devonian fish. 1966, collagen and blood vessels in dinosaur bone. So this stretched all the way back to the 1950s and 60s. But often, I presume, not very well known. They're buried in the scientific literature. And most people, and probably including uh, most of us at CMI at one time, were not aware of these things. Yes. Uh, it was only when, I think, in the mid-1990s that Dr. Schweitzer got a lot of publicity for finding these things and really um, kick-started the whole um, process of, of other people finding these things as well. And that's when we learned about it, for instance. When we have prompted by what she found, we go to find uh, that, in fact, it's not the first time it's ever been discovered. Yes, that's right. Um, the reason we use Mary Swixer is because she has been uh, publicized in the media a lot mm -hmm. with colorful photos of this soft tissue, but she's mm -hmm. not the first. In fact, I'm actually maintaining a database of scientific papers documenting dinosaur soft tissue and ancient soft tissue with Dr. Brian Thomas from, from ICR as well. Oh yeah, Dr. Thomas knows what he's talking about because he's got his PhD from a, a university in, in the UK on uh, collagen and fossils. So he, he's a real specialist in this area. So you can actually get a PhD in this area. It's not a one-off kind of thing. Uh, from a secular university, I might add. Yes, okay. So one of the other things that we find is not just protein and collagen, and collagen is a stable protein. In fact, we know that these things cannot last for millions of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, dinosaurs did not live in freezing liquid nitrogen. They live in climates like ours. I think 15,000 years, all collagen should be gone. It works, but they actually believe that dinosaurs were, were lived in warmer climates than what we have. And uh. reaction rates in chemistry are exponentially dependent on temperature. Okay. That's right. So, I mean, as a rule of thumb, you, you 10 Celsius degrees uh, temperature raise, you double the reaction rate. So you have a very fairly small temperature raise, you're going to uh, hugely increase the reaction rates of decomposition. Okay, so even under freezing cold conditions, collagen shouldn't have lasted till the age of dinosaurs. And by the way, collagen is an animal protein. It's not produced by bacteria or fungi. It's clearly the result of the original uh, animal because the major components of, of bones, a major non-mineral component of bones. So in other words, it's not contamination by it, bacteria. It cannot be, no. Um, but there are other things which are even less stable than collagen. DNA is extremely unstable. And they found DNA. Yeah. I mean, if you might remember the, uh, sorry, the 2015 Nobel Prize for Chemistry was awarded for three people who discovered DNA breaks down so quickly it should not, we shouldn't be alive, except for the fact that we must have repair machines to undo that damage. I mean, every cell in your body would, has about a million mutations, but we've got repair machines to undo them. But after death, DNA is going to break down extremely quickly. And we have the figures showing that even if you cooled it to minus five Celsius, which I think is about 25 American degrees, um, uh, the DNA would last to about 6.8 million years. And that's about a tenth of the claimed age of the T-Rex bone in which DNA has been clearly found. That's right. I think at the current moment, we have at least four documented cases of dinosaur DNA. And one of the tests that they used to test for this is a DAPI stain test. Right. So um, do you want to explain what's Oh, okay. What's well, DAPI see, stain? DAPI is a flat molecule and it lodges in the minor groove of the double helix as per this diagram. And when it does so, it actually gives off a fluorescent signal, which is very distinctive. Now, any other context, no one would doubt that this was a positive test for DNA. Um, so when you find it in dinosaurs, you should think the same sort of thing. It's a positive test that DNA is there, and at least enough to form a, a double helical configuration for the DAPI molecule to lodge. So you're talking about 10 or so units long, and yet the figures of DNA Breakdowns show it should all be completely fragmented in about a tenth of that supposed age if it were frozen the whole time. So in other words, it's um, double helical DNA is mm -hmm. pretty intact there. And one of the things that we know is that even background radiation alone should be mm. enough to wipe out all these biomolecules that we're talking about if they're even a million years old. So Mary Swixer, she finds all this soft tissue and she says that 
she appeals to what we call the iron preservation. Mm-hmm. What, what's that? Well, okay, what she did is she did an experiment with some ostrich blood vessels and she managed to extract a hemoglobin from blood cells and pour a very concentrated solution of, of hemoglobin basically into and, and preserved ostrich blood vessels for two years. Well, okay, two years isn't exactly 68 million years. Uh, so it's a bit of an extrapolation. But what she proposes is that iron causes free radicals that cross-link proteins and make them more resistant. So that's, that's the Fenton reaction. That's the Fenton, Fenton reaction. But normally organic chemists use Fenton chemistry to destroy organic tissue. And there's certain things that have been found in Dr. Schweitzer's work that should have been destroyed if the Fenton reaction was occurring. So in other words, she doesn't really know what she's talking about? Well, I think she's what reaction? You, well, I think it's inconsistent. You can't uh, once you propose a reaction, it's going to do what it does. Like you can't say it's going to do this, but oh, it won't do this thing. But we're observing it's these things are found. Therefore, it's good evidence that Fenton has not been responsible for, for preserving it. That's interesting because mm. I think if you go on eighties websites, they they always appeal to this Fenton reaction. And what you're saying is that mm. the Fenton reaction will produce byproducts that will actually degrade those biomolecules faster. And I don't see how Fenton would actually preserve DNA because uh, DNA is a totally different background. So not only amino acids are phosphate and sugar, and, I, and iron would not help preserve DNA. And I, I think what's interesting is that many of these so-called ancient soft tissue that mm-hmm. we find, it's not just in dinosaurs. So they can't, they can't mm, just true. appeal to Fenton reaction for preservation in dinosaur bones because it's not just dinosaurs. That's a good point too, isn't it? In yeah. fact, I think that um, dinosaur is the least of the evolutionist um, worries because using the evolutionist dates, what's the oldest sample we have? It's actually 2.5 billion year old. Whoa, that's... We have original biomolecules still. That's a huge issue for them. And that uh, 2.5 million years makes dinosaurs look as spring chickens. That's uh, by evolutionary dating, yeah. Right, and this is from uh, algae and from other mm-hmm. molecules. And in fact, I think if you look at, if you take that as, as what it is, looking at the so-called geological column using evolutionist dates, it can go all the way down to the lowest layers of fossils mm. and we still find original biomolecules. That's yes. a huge problem for them, I think. Right. I think dinosaurs, are, of course, are the most famous of these ancient creatures. But uh, I think what you say actually is, is more of a problem, yeah. Yeah. So it's more than Mary Swiser. It's more than just dinosaur. This is a massive problem for evolution um, and for the idea of millions of years. So at this current time, we do not have just one or two papers. We have 59 documented cases Ooh. in the scientific literature, circular scientific literature of dinosaur biomaterials spanning over 31 different scientific journals. And Whoa. like we explain, we don't just talk about dinosaurs, but we just, but we talk about um, marine reptiles and birds and, and things like that. We have 119 publications. That's a lot. I think mosasaurs have had some things like even some of the eye proteins have been, are still there. Yeah, in fact, it's almost every other month that we have a new documented case mm. in the scientific literature. Because now I guess people are more and more expecting to find them. At one time, they wouldn't have been looking. And what if you don't look for something, you don't generally find it. But now they're finding it, which I think is a tacit admission that Dr. Schweitzer did find what she claimed to have found. Yeah, in fact, earlier on, we mentioned the database that um, we catalog all this. In fact, one, one other thing that's interesting is that we actually find carbon-14 in dinosaur bones. Do you want to elaborate on why that's an Oh, sure? yeah, because, see, carbon-14, see, it can't prove millions of years because carbon-14 is a very fast decaying radioactive element. Its half-life is about 5,730 years. So after one half, we've got half of it left. After two, there's a quarter. After three, there's an eighth, and so on. It's, there's only about a millionth of the original stuff, and it starts off as one in every trillion carbon atoms as carbon-14. So it's going to be below detector limit after about 20 half-lives. So if we're detecting carbon-14 at all, um, it can't even have been a million years old. It can't even really be 100,000 years old because otherwise it, we, it should be below detector limit. And yet here we are finding it in dinosaur bones and coal alleged 300 million years old, in diamonds alleged to be billions of years old. They've all got carbon-14, but they shouldn't if... If they're that old, so it's a choice. Is carbon-14 a reliable dating method or are these things millions of years old? You can't have both. In fact, we actually have a talk on radiocarbon dating and carbon-14, so do mm-hmm. check that out. 
Yep. Let's cover one of the objections that people always say. When we point out that there's carbon-14 in dinosaur bones, they always say, oh, that's contamination. How would you respond to that? Well, it's interesting. They, they resort to contamination when it doesn't suit their theory, but if creationists ever propose that, we're just being biased, you see. So they seem to want it only for their own anomalies. The thing is, uh, there's also carbon-13, which is another type of carbon, I think about one in every 109. What's that? What's carbon-13? Well, okay, see, carbon is every element with 12 protons as carbon. Uh, most carbon has 12 neutrons, adding up 6 plus 6 is 12, so it's carbon-12. About one in every 109 is carbon-13, so 6 protons, 7 neutrons. Carbon-14 has 6 protons, 8 neutrons, okay, um, which is one in every trillion. So you can actually do a cross-check with carbon-13 composition and just show that it's, it's not the result of contamination. It gets a bit technical, but they do have contamination cross-checks that are standard, and these things are not contaminated. Okay, so just to put that in, in layman's term, oh gosh. Um, carbon, uh, radiocarbon labs that date these things, they not only measure carbon-14, but they usually measure carbon-13, and carbon-13 allows them to account mm. for modern contamination. So yes, what you're right. saying is mm. that if they have already accounted for modern contamination, we cannot appeal to contamination anymore. Right. And what other things they can say? Or oh, is it the result of a bombardment of nitrogen atoms to make carbon? And that's how carbon-14 is produced in the atmosphere. Cosmic rays bombard nitrogen-14, make carbon-14. But if that was the explanation for carbon in these fossils or diamonds or coal, um, then we should find a correlation between carbon dating and nitrogen content, which we don't find. And if we did find it, it would make carbon-14 pretty useless as a dating method. So in other words, the contamination, um, the excuse doesn't work for them. Well, I think you may as well throw out carbon-14 as a dating method if, if in fact that's what you're going to resort to. Okay, so in this talk, we cover a number of things. We look at soft tissue, we mm -hmm. look at um, um, DNA, and we look at carbon-14. So what can you conclude from this? Well, I think uh, if we take carbon-14 as a reliable dating method, which they want us to do, well, the, it shows these dinosaur bones aren't millions of years old. And neither are the diamonds, neither is the coal. And therefore, the rocks they're in can't be that old because the rocks are the same age. And therefore, it calls into question the whole idea of the Earth is billions of years old. But it is consistent. All these things are consistent with the Earth being about 6,000 years old and the fossils being formed in the flood about 4,500 years ago. All this is consistent. I mean, we're not going to say it proves it, but we're saying it's consistent with the biblical data. Okay, in fact, so what we're looking at here only can be is best explained when you start with what the Word of God says. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you. This is enough for, for, uh, for now. Uh, we could be here for hours talking about it, but if you want to find out more, look at the links and show notes down below this video. We've got lots of different articles and even some resources on this. In fact, Joel and I have written a book on dinosaurs, which God willing, is going to be published this year. Mm -hmm. So don't forget to like and to share this and to comment on uh, what you've learned, but please watch the video before commenting, okay? So thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye from Joel and from me. Thank you. Thank you.